Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, supermarkets charged for false prices. Civil servants top drunk driving arrests. And Western Dry Spell costing millions. From the studios of FBC Super, Jackie Spade. Two prominent supermarket chains have been found guilty for selling items at a price different to that being displayed on the shelf. Newell Supermarket and Morris Hedstrom Western branches have been ordered to pay a fine of $20,000 each within 21 days. Rachel Noth with the exclusive details. The Competition and Consumer Commission first received customer complaints about the two supermarkets early last year. We're looking at... Uh what was the quantum of the breach, what were, what were some of the things that uh, happened. We looked at the previous history of this particular trader and we found that uh, yes, previously there were some breaches as such. The decision was made to file the matter in court. It was established that the New World Supermarket in Bar was charging $3.15 for a bottle of Sprint Cola instead of the displayed price of $2.99. Morris Hedstrom in Lotoka displayed meat masala and gift beauty soap at discounted prices, but charged a higher price at the cash register. The Fiji Competition and Consumer Commission has warned it will not hesitate to take action in such cases. Keep this in mind. It takes a lot of 10, 20 cents to uh, go up to $20,000. It's, it's a lot of money. The maximum penalty for such offences has increased to $50,000 following government's review in the last national budget. Don't engage in unscrupulous business practices. Uh, identify issues. If you've identified issues, come to us, be proactive. If uh, a genuine mistake has been made, we will assist you. But where we find that there is a degree of unquestionable conduct, a degree of misrepresentation, that is where uh, we put the foot down and say, no, enough is enough. The fine is to be paid within 21 days. Both supermarkets have 28 days to appeal the case. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Serious concerns have been raised by the police commission on the number of civil servants arrested for drunk driving. In just a month, more than 200 civil servants have been arrested for driving under the influence. Details with Felipe Naikaso. 233 civil servants were arrested by police for drunk driving from July to September this year. What is the message being sent out when people we rely on or expect to be reliable are now unreliable in this sense? Gilio says that he is disappointed with civil servants topping the list of driving under the influence. We've had uh, civil servants, we've had lawyers, we've had military personnel, We've had police personnel, even corrections personnel, teachers, people that we rely on uh, to help us uh, in teaching our younger ones and teaching others on road safety and proper road usage. But these are the people that we are arresting. And then it's on a daily basis as well. FBC News spoke to a few people on this issue who stated that civil servants arrested for drunk driving should be dealt with? Well, I think uh, looking at the stats, uh, I think that they should be disciplined uh, accordingly and uh, uh, no one is above the law. Uh, everybody should be treated fairly and uh, they should be disciplined according to breaking the law. Well, I think all citizens of this country should have equal rights, regardless of whether they are civil servants or who. Yeah, no one is above the law. And if you are a civil servant, if you are caught drinking and you should also be punished. Police Commissioner also states they will continue to highlight these cases as civil servants need to be more responsible because they hold public positions. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Around $1.5 million is spent every month to cart water to affected areas in the Western Division as the prolonged dry spell continues. Water Authority's Chief Executive Opetai Ravai says thousands of Fijians are affected by the dry spell. Pranita Prakash has more. 
Around 100 trucks are cutting water to affected areas every day, including households without a piped water supply. We are giving at least 1,000 litres per family. And uh, that should last a family of five at least for one week. Now we know in some instances there are more than five people in the house, so they may ask for more water, which we do supply. And there are also ad hoc requests that are not according to the schedule of water cuts and who are now experiencing uh, uh, their sources drying up. They are now being uh, added to the, to the list. Areas like Mba, Tawa and Rakiraki have not received substantial amount of rain for some time now. We get continuous requests for water cutting in areas that we never used to go before. The uh, wells and the uh, rural sources are drying up. And um, we're now experiencing the same problem uh, in some parts of the northern division. The Fiji Metrological Office says the dry weather is expected to ease by next month. As you are fast approaching uh, the uh, tropical cyclone and wet season, uh, we've seen that some rains have started to return, especially in the northern parts, in the eastern parts of the country. Uh, we'll see that soon the rains will also uh, coming back uh, to the western parts of, of the country. Uh, we saw some afternoon showers developing and uh, coming over uh, earlier this week. Ravin Kumar says most areas in the west will experience rain this weekend, which will be a slight relief. However, more rainfall is expected from next month. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Police are still trying to get in touch with the students who were involved in a graphic sexual activity on social media. Spokesperson Ananai Soro says that, says that they are also trying to track down the person who uploaded the video. Nai Soro says the person responsible for uploading the video could be charged with defilement and tra trafficking. She is urging the public to stop sharing the video. Police are pleading with the public to call Crime Stoppers on 919 if they have information on this case. Meanwhile, Lifeline Fiji has been in contact with the girl's relatives and helping her out in any way possible. We are the Rasubuni Kurnabili, Borani Batskara and Barabin and Rana, the Taltakin and Barong and Bula FM, number two and Serre. Bula! Bula FM, number two and Serre. A 47-year-old man from Batiniwai settlement in Dambati alleged to have murdered his brother-in-law appeared in the Suva High Court this morning. Epeli Talakumbu is charged with one count of murder. It's alleged he murdered 42-year-old Masi Kalaro two weeks ago during a drinking party when the accused and the victim had a heated argument. The prosecution has asked for 14 days to prepare information and disclosures. The defense has also asked for time for pending formal bail application. The case will be recalled on the 10th of November. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service Maritime Compliance Team searched two foreign fishing vessels at the Suva Wharf last week and seized undeclared goods that included live dogs, cigarettes, liquor and R22 cylinders, which is an ozone-depleting substance. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says these fishing vessels were profiled as high-risk by their officers and upon arrival searched for smuggled items. Das says the assessment by their officers was proven correct as undeclared items in nine dogs were found on the vessel. He says that they notified by security authority of Fiji regarding the undeclared dogs and handed over the R22 cylinders to the Department of Environment while other undeclared items have been detained by customs. Dust adds that it is vital for vessel agents to provide proper documentation which clearly outlines and states all relevant items on the vessel before it arrives into the country. Failure to declare any such items may result in stringent enforcement action. Meanwhile, BAF has ensured that the dogs are now securely bonded on board the fishing vessels and is monitoring them on a daily basis. The fishing vessels have been fined for not declaring the dogs. Diwali celebrations were held across the country yesterday to mark the Hindu Festival of Lights. Maggie Boyle was out and about in the Suvanasori corridor and filed this report last night while enjoying the festivities. 
Diwali celebrations with the staples from the food, fashion and fireworks and in Suva, the rain. While celebration was the theme, it was also a time to reflect on the spiritual significance of the occasion. Main reason and on this day we call Amawase, this day our uh, uh, Lord Mother who came on the earth and the same day Lord Rama returned from the Avidya. At the same day, same date. That's why we celebrate Deepavali. For many households, it was a time spent with family, reveling in all things Diwali. What's your favorite thing about Diwali? Um, firecrackers. And it's a little bit, it's raining a little, but you're going to play with the firecrackers after this. What's your favorite, favorite firecracker? Um, the big, big one. <laughs> the weather is not with us, but still we are hoping good and wishing each and everybody happy Diwali. And we're looking forward to unite with each other. So we started two days prior to Diwali and we started like only with me and my brother and my dad. So we started slow and by like yesterday we were able to get the whole thing together. For many non-Hindus, Diwali is a welcomed yearly celebration. Fireworks, lights and the Indian sweets. Keeping with the spirit of Diwali, may the festival of lights bring joy, peace and prosperity to you and your family. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Pacific Island countries should now shift to renewable energy sources in the battle against climate change. Speaking at the Pacific Climate Law and Governance Symposium in Suva today, the Pacific Islands Development Forum said the time to act is now. Sanyan Imboilo reports. The transport industry rely a lot on fossil fuels and it's about time we invest more in renewable energy sources. Uh, so that we, we, get, we get the message across that investment in, in fossil fuels is, is actually something beyond the, uh, to the, other, uh, the other century. The BIDF adds we should find ways to complement the global negotiations with regards to tackling climate change. USP lecturer in international relations, Dr. Wesley Morgan says fossil fuels are at the heart of energy for many economies. And so it's up, for, up to Pacific Island countries to continue to lead from the front and really be the moral authority that is needed uh, if we are to see a shift towards renewable sources of energy. The One Day Symposium is a partnership between the USP with universities around the country looking at the interface of the climate change and international law. The symposium is in line with the COP23 negotiations, which will be held next month. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. More than 100 artists will be in Fiji to be part of a six-month cultural bonanza called Namaste Pacifica Festival of India. Indian High Commissioner to Fiji, Visva Sapkal, says the event will feature Indian music, dance, drama and culinary fest. He says the program, which starts next week Monday, will also include workshops, seminars and conferences of historical and cultural importance. 125 artists from 11 groups, they will be coming and they will be performing uh, more than 50 events in Fiji as well as uh, six other Pacific Island countries which are in our jurisdiction. That is the Cook Islands, Kiribati, Nauru, Tonga, uh, Tuvalu and Vanuatu. Uh, so this is a cultural bonanza which is being uh, arranged uh, basically uh, at uh, India at 70. We are celebrating our uh, 70 years of independence and the whole year long uh, celebrations are being uh, conducted uh, across the world and this will be done in Fiji also. So this is a part of that. Ahead in sports with Jamie, Eroni Vasiteri loses overseas contract but up next is Rachel with business. Thanks Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. All Black's great to speak at the Tourism Excellence Award. And in growing Fiji, Watuwanga Bailey Bridge to undergo repairs. Stay with us. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
Welcome back, Leading Business Tonight. Former All Blacks great Sir Michael Jones will be the keynote speaker at the 2017 ANZ Fiji Excellence in Tourism Awards in February next year. He recently became a Knight Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit for his great work in the Pacific community. Chair of the Board Trustees Bill Whiting says Sir Jones is a great ambassador for the Pacific and for the game that is loved by all Fijians. The entries deadlines for the awards has been extended to Monday, October 23rd. And we now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading market. Vinaka. Let's look at the performance of our basket of currency over a five-day moving average against our Fijian dollar. When compared to last week, the US dollar has weakened by 17 points, the Kiwi dollar has strengthened by 24 points, and the Aussie dollar has strengthened by 10 points. However, today the New Zealand dollar was the weakest it has been against our Fijian dollar this year at 0 0.6775. This comes after the left-leaning Labour Party won support of a minor nationalist party to form a ruling coalition following an inclusive election last month. This news caused the New Zealand dollar to slide by as much as 1.4% to 0 0.7047 against the US dollar a level not seen since late May and the biggest percentage decline since November 2016. This is great news for those buying New Zealand dollars, but not so great for those selling New Zealand dollars. That's the economic news right now. This is my last appearance. Watch for Rocker to fill this spot next week, bringing you all the latest banking news from HFC. Vinaka. Thank you for your updates, Avanada. Looking at today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar. The Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 317 and 48 cents respectively. The Australian dollar also went down to close at 60 cents, while the New Zealand and PNG Kina strengthened to close at 67 cents and 135. As for the commodities market, it was a mixed day with oil prices closing at 51.29 a barrel. Gold went up to close at 1,290 per ounce and silver closed at 17.30 an ounce. And in Goran Fiji tonight, motorists using the Vatuanga Bailey Bridge are advised that Fletcher Road will be closed between Tor Street and Varia Road East and West from 9 p.m. tomorrow night. The planned closure will allow FRA contractors to carry out road access work on the new bridge embutments. The detour will be along Kasanji Street and Grantham Road. The travelling public is requested to plan their travel accordingly as the bridge will be closed during this period. Fletcher Road will reopen at 4 a.m. on Monday morning next week. And that's a wrap from Business This Week. Now to sports. Here's Jamie. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up, Fiji and Rua named to play Queensland Country. And Ami wins the oldies competition. This and more after the break. I am a member of the Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. Hi, I'm Sandhya Naira Refugi. My friends are listening to Mr. FM. Mr. FM is hot. I love Mr. FM. We are the best of Mr. FM. Mr. FM is hot. Mr. FM is hot. Mr. FM is hot. Mr. FM is hot. The Fiji Airways Nrua have put a lot of emphasis on mental fitness ahead of its clash with Queensland country in the eighth round of the Australian National Rugby Championship. The Nrua are undefeated at home so far and are out to topple second-placed Queensland as well as increase its chances of a home semi-final. Eroni Tuinuku reports. Tomorrow's match will be about mental fitness as the Nrua boys fight for semi-final spot. The coaches and uh, SNCs have uh, put in some... Uh, tactics just to help us mentally, just to stay composed. Building a strong team bond will also boost the Nrua boys in all aspects of the match. It's all about mental toughness, how we prepare and how's the morale in the team will all boost uh, 
uh, we all boost how we, we how will we go and fight during the game. The Druids have one thing in common to rise to a higher standard of international tests. Uh, we've talked about uh, trying to prove ourselves to our uh, flying Fijian coaches. The Nrua team will take on Queensland Country at 2 p.m. at Lotokas Churchill Park. Eroni Twinuku, FBC Sports. Olympic gold medalist Kichone Tailinga will start on the wing for the Fiji Airways Nrua when they face Queensland Country tomorrow. Frank Lomani and Alibriti Vito Kani make up the halves combination while Apete Ndaveta and John Stewart will combine in the centres. Apisalome Wangatambu is named to start at fullback. Meanwhile, Choli Betayaki, Ratunais and Avuma and Moses Ndubidaki make up the front row and are joined by forwards Mateasi Udu Tambua, Penny Naulango, Filimoni Seru, Moses Evoka and Penny Reinre. Ireland's Connect Rugby Club has confirmed they will not proceed with the signing of Fijian Rua Sente Roni Vasiteri. The club says they have had to withdraw from signing Vasiteri due to his nine-week suspension in the NRC that leaves him unavailable for majority of the season. Vasiteri was suspended for coming into contact with the eyes of Canberra Vikings hooker Falau Fainga. Age wasn't a barrier for the two defence forces during the development grade and oldies division clash at the Schooner Bowl Challenge this afternoon. The team from Queen's Elizabeth Queen Elizabeth Barracks finished victorious, defeating the boys in blue in both the categories. Eroni Tuinuku reports. Six years of drought came to an end when the Army Development side defeated police 20 to 15 in a close encounter. It's a very big achievement. In regards to the lapse of six years, we didn't want any game against the police development. So I head off to the boys, especially the, we start off with the low note of training, so we end up in winning the competition. The successive victory of the Army Oldies and the Army Development side was meant for all officers in the Middle East and their loved ones. Donning the, the Army GC is not only for them, it's for those that living all over the world in the yeah, Middle East uh, uh, theater and also the all the battalions all around the, the country and also the family. Police oldies guest player Serma Yambai applauded both teams for their splendid performance. Well you're not short of uh, you know competitiveness among the two servicemen. Um, you know the the oldies uh, a lot of uh, former players, they've, uh, you know, they've, they've done their part in, in terms of um, you know, representing, uh, representing, uh, representing uh, our country as well as their, you know, the police and the army team uh, from previous years. The army oldies edged the police force 2017 at the Bidesi Park in Suva this afternoon. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. 32 teams have confirmed their participation at the 2017 Fiji Better Wairiki Sevens next month. Tournament organizers are targeting another 20 teams for the event. The tournament will be held on the 29th of next month to the 2nd of December and was launched today with the announcement of Paradise Beverages as official sponsors. It goes to good use, I'm sure it does do. Um, like a lot of these sponsorships that we do, particularly in the rugby, we don't sell any more beer. We don't sell any beer. But we feel it's a way that a company of our, of our stature should be giving back something to the community. I would like to thank uh, each and everyone uh, in the beer company for supporting us all the way. Uh, it's like they said, uh, the, we've seen that the Vini team has been the stronger team in the local sevens tournament. And that has been the result of the future beat the Vini sevens all throughout the years. 14-year-old Gideon Roden is aiming high going into the 2017 ITTF World Cadet Challenge starting next Tuesday in Suva. The son of Fiji Para Table Tennis Pacific Games gold medalist Mary Roden. Gideon looks forward to adding another win for the family. Meli Tavanga reports. Inspired by his mother, Gideon Roden is doing all he can to make his mum and his siblings proud next week. I'm happy to be part of this uh, tournament. And, uh, I'm preparing to play with good results. A year nine student of DAV College hopes to gain more exposure in the tournament. I'm looking to, to beat uh, Europa, Europa country. They're yeah, quite good players. I'm, facing, I'm preparing to play with them good results. 
Meanwhile, 11 year old Jay Chohuk is very excited to be playing in front of his parents. Just for my parents, they, they say that uh, I always. Uh, uh, they say that I must take a spot, like everyone should take a spot, actually, so I chose this spot. I'm very ready for it. The Class 6 student of Yatsen Primary will be playing his third international tournament and is a bit nervous to be up against top overseas competitors. I just think that they are really good and they are well experienced with these uh, kind of competitions. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not scared, just a bit nervous. The World Cadet Challenge starts next Tuesday at Suva's Vodafone Arena and ends on the 29th of this month. Melita Valle, FBC Sports. That's it from sports. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media, we look at several chat fiction apps that teenagers are going crazy for. That's coming up. Radio <laughs> Have you ever heard of chat fiction apps? If not, then you probably need to download it. These digital book alternatives, which are presented as text messages, have been dominating the app charts for the past few months. The format may seem a little strange for people who are used to paperback books, but at least young people are reading. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello to you and to another super weekend. Hope you enjoyed your Diwali. Even though it was a wet one, well, Mother Nature has her own ways. We're most likely to witness such rainy weather scenarios due to, due to the nearing of cyclone season. Looking at the west, there wasn't much sunshine around. It was mostly cloudy. Eastwards from Pek Haba to Suva, a rainy day throughout the areas. And up north, conditions were much cloudy and dull on this side as well. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. And for the tides, low tide tomorrow morning will be at 12.26 with a high tide at 6.45. See the beauty of sunrise at 5.33. For tomorrow, a cold front is moving towards us. So there's going to be some chilly conditions with intervals of showers. So ensure to keep warm. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be the coolest with highs of 25 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, rain is likely to stick around for a while before it leaves us with finer conditions. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, do you think the Fijian draw can qualify for the NRC semifinals? Yes, definitely. Uh, I think uh, the Fijian draw will uh, qualify for all the way, Fiji and Draw will make it this weekend. I believe uh, Fiji will uh, qualify to the semi final. Yes, of course, if they join together, they can reach the semi final. Recapping the main story, supermarkets charge for false prices, civil servants top drunk driving arrests, and Western Dry Spell costing millions. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, do you think fireworks are too expensive this year? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day. This picture was taken at the Raki Raki Golden Point Resort. It was sent in by Ilisoni Momo. We'd like to encourage all our viewers to send in more pictures of our beautiful Fiji, whether it's our tropical flowers, our stunning waterfalls, maybe a visiting cruise ship or even your favourite pit. Just email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. 
Bye for now. Kerana itu talita kan baru rongan radio Fiji One dan Dumai Viti. Ayah saya nak rujuk. Kita komunikasi dengan Tuala dan Talita kan radio Fiji One dan Dumai Viti. Ayah saya nak rujuk. Kita